Hey guys, I'm Rick and welcome back to Maple Syrup Tech. Today, we have another project in front of us, but it's going to be a little different than usual. We're not actually going to be building a system today, we're going to be, made, we're going to be building a homemade test bench. Because I'm sort of fed up of always uh, pulling my main system apart to test coolers and graphics cards and whatnot. So what we're going to do is we're going to be, uh, this is everything on the table here that you're going to need, we're going to need today to do this test bench. We're going to go through it really quick. But other than the tools that you might already have at home or that you just have to borrow from a family member or a friend that probably already has these tools because there's nothing too special in them, uh, it's a really cheap project. The principle was I wasn't going to spend $200 plus on a test bench because that's what it costs. Um, I thought of building my own. So what, we're, what the, the main thing you're going to need is an old ATX case. This one I got for five bucks. So it's really an old computer case, but it fits an ATX motherboard. That's the only thing that's important with the case you choose. And uh, ideally it has to be a case that has panels that come off on each side. So you can't take like a Dell or sometimes an HP uh, old case because often they won't have side panels on each side. So uh, that's the first thing you're gonna need. Secondly, we are gonna need a two by two uh, wood. I got this at the hardware store for $2.50, an eight foot pole. You actually don't need eight feet, but you know, they're sold often in uh, large quantity, like, you know, very long sticks like this. So there's no problem. You can always keep the leftover for other stuff. Uh, what you're probably going to need as well is a little sanding block like this, which is about like, once again, like two or three dollars. And lastly, uh, what will be reu what won't be reusable is going to be, uh, and this is optional, it's for aesthetics, but I'm, I'm, I got a can of spray paint and I chose metallic because it's going to, we're, we're basically going to spray paint the wood so that it doesn't actually look necessarily like wood. So, but it's optional. You don't actually have to buy this. The rest of the stuff we're going to need are the tools. So what you will need is a drill. Okay, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you later what we're gonna use this for, but we're gonna need it a couple of times during the process. Ideally an angle grinder or any kind of uh, metal cutting tool, but I find that the angle grinder is the easiest and most versatile tool to use. Also, if you don't have one, it's the cheapest. Uh, a metal file, okay. This is just to take off the rough edges once we cut the metal. And you're gonna need some wood screws, basically. Um, the rest of the stuff we're going to use here should be already in the, in the case. If you don't, you're going to need some standoffs, okay? But you can normally find them for free or, you know, you can buy them from a computer shop. They should be like five cents a standoff. And you can need up to nine if you want to use an extended ATX. Uh, if you want to make your, your, your test bench an extended ATX test bench. And once again, the last tool here that's not on here that I have behind that is once again optional are clamps. If you're working alone like I will today, these are just regular clamps that will help hold the, the material while I'm cutting it. So if you're working alone, I recommend you get this. Once again, it's like three or four bucks, a clamp, you know, a basic clamp like this, maybe seven or eight for a more, uh, more advanced clip like this. But it'll help you a lot when you're going to be using the cutting tools. So in the next few minutes, you're going to see me go step by step through what we're going to need to do to transform this into a test bench. Just to tell you, some of the work's going to be done outside and there, it's actually windy here today. So I'm not sure the microphone would be picking out sound too, you know, too well. So I might actually come back inside to explain to you the steps as we go along and then basically film the steps outside without necessarily talking or whatnot. So uh, we're going to get to work. And uh, so keep this tuned in and I'm going to show you the, all this step by step. Okay guys, so first step, we're going to be looking, what first thing we're going to want to do, so I removed the side panels from the case, is we're going to want to strip this case down. And for this part, we're going to need our drill, okay, because most cases are put together with rivets. And what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to drill out the rivets to really take everything apart. The parts we want to keep together, let me just pop off the front panel here, okay, there. So you want to get, as you're going to taking everything apart, you're going to want to keep every wire, especially the power button, because we're actually going to use that later. And what we're going to do, like I said, is we're going to uh, strip the case. So what you really want to do is that we want to take off every part of the case except the bottom panel where the motherboard hangs on. 
And if you can, try to leave the rear part where the graphic card support is because we want to keep that attached to the motherboard panel. So basically, I'm gonna, you're going to see me do it in the next little while, but we're going to have to drill out every one of the rivets we don't need so that we get just the motherboard panel with the support for the graphic cards in the end. What we're going to start is we're going to start with the outer shell and we're going to move towards the parts we want. As you go, keep every part, especially the side panels, we're going to need them later. And uh, keep as well any drive trays, anything, because you can always reuse those after as well uh, as a sort of hard drive support uh, when you have your test bench, bench up and running. So uh, let's get to drilling. Okay guys, so now we have the rivets off. So we're going to look at the next step, which is going to be cutting the parts we're going to need. Now with my particular case, there was some good news and there was some bad news. First of all, the good news was that the motherboard tray was actually shorter than the case. And the part that I wanted to cut off actually in the front, we won't have to cut off. Uh, the reason why is simply because uh, I'd, I want to keep this sort of where to be able to pass the wires through and they be shielded when we have our power supply underneath. Uh, so the only things we're going to have to cut, so the good news is, is that, is that we, we won't have to cut at all the motherboard tray, we'll be able to leave it as one piece, but this will vary depending on the case you're using because you don't want, you know, you don't want a huge test bench either. You want it to be, you know, have the smallest footprint possible. So the only parts we're going to have to uh, cut is one of the side panels here that I took. Okay, what we're going to do is place the motherboard over it, basically align it with the side of the tray. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself about an inch. I'm going to mark a line here across. We're going to be cutting off this section here. So you want the motherboard tray to be a little bit smaller than the panel, but not too much. So that's why I'm just giving it about an inch and I'm going to mark it off, cut it. And I'm also going to cut the lip off here, off of the side because the lip is not of any use. So I'm going to try to follow as close as I can to the side and cut that lip off with our angle grinder here. Uh, the bad news, however, as you can see, the support for the, the video cards is not attached anymore. The reason why is because it actually wasn't part of, it wasn't riveted at all to the motherboard tray. It was only riveted to the case. So I have it here. What we're going to do is we're going to just cut off the section we don't want. And I'm going to see at the end if I can find a way to fasten it back to the motherboard tray once everything's going to be built at the end. Or at least before we assemble the motherboard tray to the bottom part, I'm going to go look. I think I might be able to just, you know, drill a couple of holes here and then basically fasten it with some screws and nuts and bolts, basically. So uh, next step, we're going to go cut. So we're going to go outside for this one because I don't want... Uh, all kinds of you know uh, metal uh, metal shards all over my 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 house. So we're gonna be going outside for the cutting, and I'll see you guys after once we have every once we have the all the parts we need cut. Hey guys, here we are outside. 
So like I said, I won't talk too long because the sound out here is actually probably pretty awful and there's people making noise around and I can't really tell them to stop since we're outside. Uh, so as you saw, uh, I didn't mention it in the earlier part, but I decided to cut right away the four uh, basic stands we're going to need for the uh, test bench. It's pretty simple. As you saw, you just cut whatever length you need, but at least a, a foot long, okay? At least a foot long and then basically what you do is you just use it to mark off all your other parts because they don't it, the, the length isn't that important what's important is that all four end up the same length and by the way i used my uh my angle grinder to cut the wood but if you have a circular saw i would recommend using that instead do not use an angle grinder like i did it's just because i don't have a circular saw and i didn't want to do it with a hand saw it was uh, it was god awful so uh you know that's what I did. So the next step what we're going to do is we're just going to sand down the, the, the four legs and we're going to paint them, we're going to, I'm going to spray paint them silver. Like I said, the paint, the paint step is optional, so you don't have to do it to build your test bench, but if you want a little bit better aesthetics, it is recommended. Hey guys, so now we're back inside and basically we're getting pretty much to the end of our process here today. But what we're going to do next is drill four holes in the side of our motherboard tray and we're going to attach one of the posts under each one of the corners. Then what we're going to do is we're going to drill four holes in the basic the side, the, the siding of the case that we cut out earlier and we'll place the motherboard with the posts in between like this up top pretty much bringing us to the end of our build but like i said i'm gonna have to work on attaching after that this so we're gonna come back we're gonna look at what the plan is for attaching the uh, graphics card support as well as attaching our um, our uh, drive tray at the bottom and like I said, I kept all the wires. So what most, what's going to be most useful is the start button, because instead of having to jump your your motherboard, if you just attach your your on off button. So that's why I said keep all this. I kept the speaker as well. It's a really old PC speaker. It's a huge one, but at the same time, when you're doing a new build and you want to make sure that your motherboard is uh, is booting is booting, it's not a bad idea to have one of these. Uh, I meant posting. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah, when you want to know that your motherboard is posting, it's a good thing to have a, always a speaker on hand. I have smaller ones, but I'm going to keep this one for this tray. It'll make sure I won't lose it. So let's get to doing this and get to the end. Okay guys, welcome back. So uh, one thing I forgot, I went and I, I'd already gotten these just in case because I knew there were going to be screws on the bottom and I strongly recommend if you don't want to ruin whatever table or whatnot since we are screwing directly into the wood, uh, you can go get these at the dollar store or anything. We're going to put little cushions, so little sticky cushions on each one of the screws to really make sure that no matter what surface I'm putting my test bench on, I'm not going to be ruining the table or whatever that we have on it. So we got one, two, three, and four. So now our test bench is 90% done. 
And actually, if you guys didn't have the same problem as me where the uh, video card support was, you know, not, uh, you weren't able to leave it onto the motherboard tray, you're actually done. Now, I know my test bench is very high, but I did it on purpose like this because I don't like having to try to squeeze my hands with wires and whatnot underneath. And I decided finally that the drive cage, I'm going to leave it loose for the moment. Uh, you know, it's probably not going to cause that much rattle anyway, because I'm most likely going to use an SSD with this. And it's more really just so that the drives aren't directly on the metal that I, you know, that I'm leaving it there. Uh, however, you know, if you, if you want to, you could actually, like I said, put a little nut and bolt or something, or even uh, I was thinking of uh, possibly welding it to the bottom, because, you know, like... This isn't a welding job where you have to be very precise, so even if you've never done it before, uh, you know, a couple of welding spots and it'll be fixed on there. Like I said, however, for the top part here, for the graphics card support, that's the only part left for our build here today. And we're going to need, like I said, uh, some nuts and bolts. So we're going to uh, tack it on like this and we're going to hold it with a couple of nuts and bolts that we're going to go on the side. So this is the last step we have. Uh, after that, I'm going to install the motherboard and we're going to see what it looks like all up and running. So here we are guys, we're at the end of the project and everything went well. As you can see, I did a few adjustments. I did shorten the legs a little bit because they were too long. So now we have about 10 inch legs rather than I think I had 14 inches about. Uh, it, it just looks a little better. It's a little sturdier and the wires don't have to be quite as stretched for the power supply. We fixed the uh, problem with the uh, graphics card support. So I put a nut, two nuts and bolts right here. And now, as you can see, it keeps our graphic card nice and steady there. You don't want it too tight, though, neither, because you want to be able to, you know, fit any kind of graphics card in between the two, since it's not the original, you know, setting. You'll never have it to the millimeter exact. As you can see, I fit a micro ATX board on here. So my test bench will be up and running so that I'll be able to do co cooler tests and all that kind of stuff for the channel. And I think whenever it's uh, not uh, being uh, used, I'm going to pop my RX 480 in here and use it as a mining rig actually uh, since it's an open air bench the uh, you know the thermals that it's going to output it's going to be really good to not uh, put too much strain on the graphics card so I hope you guys have been following the project since the beginning let me know if you try to build one of your own following about the same steps as I did I hope you liked the video so likes are really appreciated Subscriptions are, are even better. Uh, it helps me a lot in growing the channel and coming out with more content. And now that we have our working test bench, I should be able to make videos on a much more steady and rapid pace. So thank you again for watching Maple Syrup Tech. Have a great day.